Hi guys, hello everybody. That's me, Robbie from EnglishFamily.com, dealing with English fluency issues since 2007. Yes, I've been seven years in business. It's seven years since I achieved English fluency myself. And uh, speaking of fluency, it's a funny thing. So many foreigners kind of think that in order to sound fluent, in order for others to consider yourself fluent, you have to match some very, very high standards. You have to speak like a professor. You have to use the most complicated grammar constructs. You have to speak using very sophisticated language. And anything lesser than that uh, just won't cut it. That's what you believe. And that's what I used to believe years ago, too. Because I was actually kind of thinking that textbook English is the standard that I have to go by. I was judging even native speakers when I heard that they're speaking somewhat uh, in a simplistic manner and using some colloquialisms and slang expressions. I wouldn't hesitate to comment on their speech and, and tell everybody, listen, that's no way to speak proper English, you know? At the same time, not being able to speak fluently myself. And it's all because I was thinking that fluent English means speaking, uh, uh, it's hard to describe, at a university level, almost. You have to be almost a professor, you have to speak uh, like a true literate. You, 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 you can't be speaking like normal, normal ordinary person, because uh, that kind of speech is not fluent, right? That's what I believed, and in relation to this, Today, I was thinking about this whole thing, and I remembered a blog post comment I received a couple of months ago, and it was very funny. And uh, the person's name who posted it is Jacques. I would imagine that's a French person. And uh, <laughs> it's a very, very funny comment, because he points out in a very sarcastic manner that fluency isn't about perfection, and, and this is what he writes. Being fluent means one can construct a subjected, indirect, object, locative, double, passive, in the past habitual progressive, and following it with a WH fronted cleft, with the subject moved to object position along, with an optional topicalization and post-modified adjective restricting the sentence focus, and having no idea what the heck the above means. You have to agree, my friends. This is funny, this is really ridiculous, but that's exactly what's uh, happening in so many people's heads. We kind of believe that in order to speak fluent English, it all has to be r almost at a rocket science level. You can't be speaking like an ordinary person because that's not fluency. Fluency is when you go to school, you, you go to your primary school, secondary level, third level education, university and uh, all the advanced grammar stuff that comes with it, it all has to be incorporated in your English, and your speech has to reflect it all. If it doesn't, you're a loser. You're, you're no good. You can't be fluent if you don't use everything you've studied, you've learned. That kind of thinking goes on in so many people's heads, and I wholeheartedly suggest you, my friends, get rid of that kind of thinking. That's what I've done, and I really don't care what others think about my speech, for as long as I can speak fluently. And speaking fluently, by all means, can be achieved by using very short and simple sentences, simple vocabulary, you don't have to speak like a professor. And you definitely don't have to construct the subjected, indirect, object, locative, double, passive, in the past, habitual, progressive, in order to sound fluent, my friends. Right? Okay, thanks for watching this video, and talk to you again. Bye-bye!